Good morning. I have an amazing podcast to share with you. If you are interested in science, if you are a researcher, if you want to pursue science at some point, there is a podcast series called Night Science. Two scientists investigate the creative process of science and they ask the question like, where do ideas come from? Because once you have an idea, once you have a hypothesis, then it's like a day science. So you do the actual work. But to come up with this idea, to come up with the hypothesis and to explore the unknown, that's the night science when most of the creative things happen. They have a series of interviews with really inspiring scientists from different fields. Today they are coming to my uni and we're gonna have a workshop and we have a really interesting schedule. So I didn't know about them before they send us an email. Today we should be covering topics like improvisational science, questions and contradictions, the two languages of science, interdisciplinarity and renaissance minds, the data hypothesis conversation, and science as a meta puzzle. I have such high expectations for today. The only thing that you have to prepare before this workshop is to listen to one or two podcasts. And yesterday when I was doing some groceries, I was listening to one of the podcasts. I think it's called The Science of Obsession. They had a guest, young scientist from the field of molecular biology, and she was talking about her experience and uh, the characteristics that determined her success in science and what's helping her in her research. When you climb the ladder in science and academia, usually you don't have much time to work in the lab and how most of the scientists really enjoy doing daily experiments, but because they have to do so much logistics that they really don't have this time to just be in the lab. They have to supervise a lot of students, mostly driving their ideas and making sure that everyone is happy and everyone is achieving something in their own research. They don't have much time to actually do what's the most fun for them. If you are interested in science, in research, if you ever want to pursue it, if you want to do a PhD, I think this is a great podcast to listen to. Science as an Obsession was one of the latest episodes, but there are so many good ones. For example, machine learning and how to be creative with it and the poetry of science. I, I just got ready and I'm going to cycle to work now. I already downloaded several episodes. Uh, I'm going to listen to them. Personally, I prefer to listen on Spotify, but you can also listen to it on Apple Podcasts or Google Podcasts. I will uh, put the link in the description below. I'm taking you with me today and I'm going to update you throughout the day and share with you the highlights. I'm listening to the podcast that I just wanted to say a few words about the topic that they are discussing now. It's about the obsessive character of research. So there is a difference between being in love with science and being in love with research because research has this obsessive character when you might just wake up at night or sometimes you cannot stop thinking about one project, especially when you are writing a paper. Sometimes work hours don't exist because you are completely obsessed with it and it's really difficult to let it go once you are in the mood of doing it, once you are immersed in the writing process. Probably it also separates research from other fields because there is no nine to five in science or research. Again, the favorite quote that the scientist is saying in the end is that fun things are not always healthy. <laughs> so true. Another thing is that she's saying, so she said that science stops to be fun once you start to view it as a, as a job. And I think that goes for anything. You might have a job, but as soon as you start looking at it as a job and as a responsibility, then it stops to be fun. So I think that's a very, very important thing to take in and digest to try to make sure that whatever you are enjoying, whatever you have fun with, just try to not see it as your job. We can prove that something is wrong. See the difference? You're like trying to kill an idea. In, in night science, you're trying to create it. You're trying to improvise. 
in uh, the, the, so the goal is very different. And you're, you're in this place that he calls the cloud, right? The cloud is you've lost your true north. You forget what you're at. So we only, we tend to perpetually see um, data that supports them. And that's not only on anthropomorphized, right? Many people have had this experience. And you've uh, uh, yeah. got the answer, but it's for the other one. That's incredible. That's incredible. But yeah, yeah, yeah. My cat was very impressed that you had the answer to this one. Yeah, uh, okay. yeah. Like, that would be yeah. Yeah. clever. This one. Uh, it's, it's, you, you, you have all the pieces. So we just had after workshop drinks now, all we could focus now was to talk about this coin puzzle because it's driving me crazy. During the workshop, I thought that I had an answer. I thought that I knew how to solve it, but then I realized that you don't know if the altcoin is heavier or lighter, and that complicates things a lot. And we've been discussing this for an hour now, and I think that I came up with the answer. I know how to come down from 12 coins to six coins in two steps and also figure out which one is the even sign but how to figure out which one is the odd one from six coins in two steps if you are not lucky like if you are lucky i know how to figure out but i need to it's so difficult to focus on anything else when i don't know the answer you should also try to solve it and let me know in the comments if you have an answer. Like, it's really complicated. I thought that it was like, oh, it's, it's just a piece of cake. I know such coin puzzles. I've done those before. I, I thought that I would be really fast with it, but no, this one is the most complicated coin puzzle I've heard in my life. So let me know if you have an answer for that. I will try to solve it before uploading this video. So I will tell you if you're right or wrong, but okay. A summary of this workshop. I cannot come up with any science related event in my life that I've had so much fun with. It was amazing, so funny, so entertaining, so many amazing ideas. I wrote down 10 quotes. I have it in my notes so I cannot really see it now. I remember some of them. So one was for example that everyone thinks that scientists solve problems. But what we actually do is that we create problems and that's the most important thing. Creating a problem, creating an idea, that's the part of the night science, which is the fun part. Another one that I found really cool was how to use metaphors and rephrasing to solve your problems faster. So to see it in a different perspective, to simplify your problem in a night science language and how it can help you to come up with more ideas and spin-offs of your project. I mean, it was amazing. There were six sections. It lasted the whole day for the, f I don't know. I don't think that ever in my life I've been focused for eight hours straight, seriously. We had so much work to do and so much brain energy required for this workshop, but it was just so much fun. I don't know, I loved it. And I think I'm gonna listen to all their podcasts now. Highly recommend if you ever come across this workshop, if you have Spotify, if you are interested in podcasts, in science, in research, highly, highly recommend. I'm gonna find my bike and cycle home now. And I just figured out how to solve the last two steps. I know! This is the greatest puzzle that I've solved recently. I think it took me two hours. One thing that you should do is you have to figure it out without pen and paper. I haven't written down a single thing. So don't use pen and paper. I haven't really realized how much I love solving puzzles and I haven't done that for so many years now.